Okay, I want to give you a quick introduction to page layout software, what it is, what it can do, when we want to use it. Um, right now, the most prominent page layout software out there is Adobe InDesign. It works with uh, Adobe Creative Suite, means, meaning that it works really flawlessly and seamlessly together with Photoshop um, and uh, uh, Illustrator. It isn't the only page layout software out there. Um, Quark Express used to be the preeminent one, but InDesign kind of took over. Um, there's a couple other options out there. Uh, in you're learning in design because that's the most the one you're most likely to need to use in a professional setting. Page layout software lays out pages. It's designed for laying out multi-page documents, and it's designed for uh, laying out documents that. Uh, will be repeatedly revised. Uh, it is. It does things that um, you can do in other software, but its special strengths lie in setting up very consistent page layouts and handling lots of text and images. Uh, um, so if you want to retouch a photo, color correct a photo, you need Photoshop. If you want to uh, draw an icon or draw a chart of some sort or draw a logo, you need Illustrator. Both Photoshop and Illustrator can handle type and they can handle text, um, but InDesign handles lots of text with a lot more finesse and it can manage lots of different images, lots of placed photos. So the main um, the main paradigm behind InDesign and other page layout software is boxes. That you have pages and you have boxes on the pages and the boxes can contain different things. So to demonstrate this, I've put together a quick, um, small little booklet about some of the main characters in the first Star Wars movie uh, from 1977. Um, there's For each one of them, we have a headline that's their name, we have a brief biography that's type, we have a photograph, and we have a little um, sidebar with a little bit of vital statistics for each one of them. Each page also has a footer, uh, which has a page number. Uh, it says the film's title on the left-hand pages, and it says main characters on the right-hand pages. Um, so it's a very simple, basic uh, booklet design. Um, but you'll notice as we flip through, all the pages have the same structure. Um, command colon shows and hides are guides um, and our guides you can see we have this black guide represents the edge of the actual page this magenta guide represents our main margins so the black is the actual edge of the paper once we produce this booklet uh, margins are something that we set up for ourselves saying we don't want to go any closer to the edge of the paper than this. And uh, you'll notice most print designs and even most digital and web designs uh, leave space uh, next to the edge of the design. Um, in print design this is absolutely crucial because you don't want things getting absolutely uh, you know, cut off. Um, it's also important because you don't want, as you're reading a booklet, you don't want your fingers to get in the way of what you're trying to read. 
Uh, it's also just important in general, even with a with a, a non-print, with an interactive or digital piece, um, it's important to have a little space, to have a little visual breathing room. It makes it much easier to process. Things don't look so crowded and cramped. Um, so that's what a margin represents. And then these cyan guides are um, our page grid. Now most designers use a page grid. We have a four by six grid, so one, two, three, four columns, one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Um, and everything is falling into that grid in one way or another. Um, this is just a tool that designers use to make uh, really consistent page layouts. It's sort of like the visual equivalent of a drum beat in a song. We have this grid behind the page. We see it when we're designing. The um, end user does not see it, um, but they can see the visual rhythm that it has set up, even if they don't consciously notice it. So guides on, guides off. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about the actual content. So there's a few things um, when you design when when you're working on an image file in Photoshop. Everything you need is there in that file. The image is there in that file. When you're working on a piece of vector art in Illustrator. Everything that you need is in that file. Uh, you draw your logo and it's there. You save the file, it's there. InDesign is a little bit different in that it refers to files outside of, outside of itself. So the InDesign file contains the text, right? Each page has three text boxes, four actually, uh, if we think of our footer. Um, and each page also has an image. Now the InDesign file does not store this photograph. Uh, we have something called a links palette. You can see in the links palette, let me make my preview a little bit bigger just to make it easier for everyone to see. Um, maybe that does not Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see a little bit better now. I have a link to each of these photos. Um, each of my eight characters from the 1977 film each have a photo, and um, it is referring to all of these. Now, if I were to just save this InDesign file and give it to someone, um, there will be two problems. First of all, all they'll get is um, uh, they will just get this layout file. Okay, but there are two important things missing. They, they will have the information about what photos InDesign expects to see, and it will have the information about how large the photos are in InDesign, but it will not actually contain the photos. Um, and it's the same for the type. It contains all the text, and it contains information about how large I want the type, and um, what my kerning and letting are, and what color I want the type, and all of those things. Uh, but it doesn't contain the fonts. So when you send someone an InDesign file or a page layout file, you need to um, package it. Um, and what that does is that collects all of the images and all of the fonts as well as the InDesign file. This is very important to remember. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video on how to do that later. It's, it's very simple. Uh, it's not hard to do, but the main thing is that you have to do it. You have to remember to do it. Um, so, 
For example, here we're looking at Han Solo. InDesign contains all the the InDesign file contains all the text, and it contains information about how I've colored the text, how I've placed it, how I've styled it. Uh, it does not contain the font. It contains the information about this photo. It knows that it's called Han-Solo.jpg. Um, and it knows I want it at 37% and how I want it the 37% size, how I want it positioned within that box. It does not contain the photo of Han Solo though. Alright, so I need that's why we package things. Um, this brings me to an important point when you're dealing with photos in InDesign. You'll notice we have um, a box that is fitting our grid. I can bring this box out to one side or another. Um, and this is because I have far more photo than I'm showing in my layout. All right? I have a little bit more at the top, I have a little bit more at the bottom, I have a lot more on the left and the right. I can scale this up if I want. Or I can make it much, much smaller. All right. I liked the positioning I had before. Um, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> put it back. 35%. I think I had it at 37 before. Maybe that's a little too tight in the box. I'm going to make it 36% kind of have him centered there in the box. Now, you may notice in this photo, um, it has his name in there. Uh, so I, I need I don't want that in my layout. I want to retouch that away. Um, there's a very simple thing you can do. You can go to your links palette. Whichever image that you have selected, you can go to the name of it and you can go down here. It gives you a few options. Relink will be if the link is broken and it doesn't know where to find this file, you can relink it there. Go to link takes you to that image in the layout. So if I want to go to Princess Leia, I can go there. If I want to go back to Han Solo, go to link, it takes me there. Um, this little pencil says edit original. Um, and what this does is this opens if it's an image file, it'll open it in Photoshop. If it's a vector file, it'll open it in Illustrator. Um, and this is gonna... Uh, this is great because it actually opened up the one I want and I can make a copy of the layer and I can... I'm gonna use the spot healing brush and just take his name out. Oh! Not good. Wow, that didn't look good at all. I'm going to give that another try with spot healing and not good. Let's go to the history and let's do this another way. Um, the spot healing didn't work. I'm going to try the clone tool. Just cloning right above. Much better results. Um, although it still looks a little dark to me, I'm going to do one more thing. Uh, I did not show this to you guys recently, but this little eyedropper tool just lets you sample the color in any area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, <coughs> set up a new gradient. This is a nice retouching trick. And I'm gonna sample these colors. There to here. That's my gradient. I'll do a little gradient fill from here to there. better. I still see a little bit of an edge and I think that's um, 
because mm -hmm. because nothing ever works perfectly. That's why. Um, so now I'll use the healing brush to just sort of. Oof, so bad. There we go, finally, good as new. All right, so, um, I have researched out Han Solo's name. I saved this file. Now if I go back to InDesign, go here, and you'll notice that it has automatically updated, that the, the Han Solo is gone. Um, now, something important to remember, any one of these pages you could lay out in Illustrator um, if you only wanted to do one page. But if you want to do a multiple page book like this, uh, InDesign is a much better choice. Um, first of all, it allows you to set up a grid. It allows you to set up something called master pages in which you have um, setups so that the grid and the same elements will appear in the same page, uh, in the same place on every page. Um, it also allows you to uh, rearrange pages. So I'm going to show you that right now. So let's let's say. Um, Let's say this book I have arranged, I have eight, eight characters from this from the movie, and I've arranged them alphabetically for C3PO, Chewbacca, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Princess Leia by her last name, etc. etc. Everything is alphabetical by last name, unless except for the um, the droids who I'm going by their first initial. Um, now let's say I've designed this whole book and I say, hey, wouldn't it be better if I set this up in a way that um, it's the order in which you see the characters when you watch the movie? Wouldn't that be better? Um, yeah, yeah, let's, let's give that a try. Well, this is one of the great things about page design software, page layout software, is that you can... Um, rearrange pages very easily. So let's make our... So I believe that the first person you see in this movie is Darth Vader and some stormtroopers, um, if I'm remembering correctly, and then you see C-3PO and R2-D2. So I can just move R2-D2's page up here. I move Darth Vader to be first instead of last, as he was alphabetically. Move C-3PO and R2-D2 to be next. And then, well, we didn't meet Chewbacca or Obi-Wan. We met Princess Leia next. So we'll move her to page four. Um, and then, who did we meet? We met Han next. He wasn't in his pilot's uniform, but that's okay move him here, then we met Obi-Wan Kenobi, then we met Chewbacca, then we met Han Solo. So I've just rearranged the pages of my book. Um, and it was, as, it was easier to do it than it was to talk about it. Um, and you may notice as I flip through the pages, all my page numbers have stayed correct. I just rearranged the whole book and yet Page one is page one, page two is page two, page three is page three, etc., etc. 
Um, that's because I have something set up called automatic page numbering. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. That's a great feature. Um, another thing that you can do in a page layout program like InDesign is that you can set up what are called style sheets. Um, you don't have to use these for this project, but I want you to show you what they are. So in this um, design, I've set up three style sheets. I have headline, that's the character's name up at the top, that's our headline. Then I have text, which is their biography. Then I have info, which is this little info box. So let's say, you know, I want to play around with my design a little bit. I've already set up all eight pages, you know, and let's say I wanted to play around with bringing more color into it. I think it's a little boring. Um, it could use just more color. Um, let's say I want to make the headlines blue. Now I could go through every single one of these and make the headlines blue. And I could open up my um, swatches and, you know, make this blue and go in here and make this blue and then I go to these two and go back to my swatches and maybe I don't remember now which um, which blue I used. Where are my swatches? Come on. <clears throat> um, you know, did I use the dark blue or did I use the light blue? I don't, I don't, I don't remember now, you know, so I go back through and I go up to here and I'm like, oh, no, I used the light blue. All right, go back. Um, so I can do it that way and it's a lot of work, you know, or I can um, go to the style sheets that I've set up. and I can edit the style sheet itself. So I can go to my headline style sheet, go to the color, make the color blue, and it just changes them all throughout the entire book. All right, I can go back, like I, I maybe I want to try a different color, let's, let's think about red for these, you know. Go through, make them all red. You know, pretty cool. It, it saves a lot of work, and this is another great thing about Page Layout Program, that it's designed, uh, it's designed to make your life easier when you're designing a, a large document or a document that you keep revising. So, designing a book, you're designing a magazine, or even if it's something small like a newsletter or a poster but you're going to be redesigning it every month or every three months or every six months it's uh, page layout software is a really good idea um, I'm gonna show you another thing just another example of this so if I want my text to be a little larger I wanna you know make I think I think this is going to be hard to read. Well, I can make it. It was nine points. I can now make it ten on twelve. I'm going to go back to nine on eleven. I think that's a good size. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, but um, just there, so that so that so that you know. Or my info, if I want to change the what the info looks like. Um, let's say. I have these rules underneath each of these, um, and it's a quarter point rule. The color is the same color as the text. Hmm, why don't we bring in the um, the blue just to see? You know, you can see. Oh, it makes a very different appearance. You know, um, and it changes the entire. Um, thing, the entire thing at once, which saves us time. 
this is what we really like as designers. We like things that will uh, be very precise um, and do it for us uh, very easily. You know, it's a great, uh, great combination to be able to um, <clears throat> be both very precise and kind of lazy at the same time. Um, so that that's what uh, uh, page layout software can do for us. It can make our lives easier. Um, I will show you how to do all these things in future. Uh, videos. This is just a brief overview of why we're using page layout software um, and why you need to learn how to use it for creating your booklet. It's the best software for the job. I'm going to show you how to do it in the following video.